Okay, here we go. Let's try this. Now, before I start, I just want to point out, I actually, this is the second take, because the first take, as I learn about how to capture video and so on, I went through the next five to six minutes or whatever you're about to see already, and then realised I wasn't recording. So here we go again. All right. Anyway, at least I've practised. Okay. This is where it all started. I'm going to take you through a bit of a slide pack um, of my initial thinking around design. So I'll try to be brief. Um, there's a few slides to get through, but just to hopefully give you some ideas about the way that I went about this particular project. <clears throat> so cockpit layouts. So when I first started, I was actually contemplating doing the steam gauge version. And so I started, you know, uh, downloading and looking at a series of um, steam gauge versions um, and I was actually heading down this path very early on uh, you know as you can see there's a few more there and I was getting some ideas about you know what the panel would look like and this that and the other but then the glass cockpit caught my eye uh, and I think it was about the same time that I'd noticed a couple of glass cockpits just by watching flight videos on YouTube and so on. And I thought, oh, this one looks really cool. Uh, now, I know that, you know, typically when you're training to be a pilot, you would start with this and then you may merge to this. But I thought, well, you know, as I said, I don't really intend on being a real world pilot, but there's nothing to stop me from learning the glass cockpit. So I liked the way this looked, um, and I felt that, to be honest, that, that this these could probably be purchased, and you know you buy that as a bit of a kit, and and therefore it might be a little bit easier to do than doing all of this. Um, so rightly or wrongly, so I made the decision, and also like sorry, I also liked the way that I could see how this was connecting. I don't know, just the way the picture was taken, but. I thought, oh, I can actually see how this can work quite well. So that was the decision. So there it was, um, decided to go with the G1000. So on the dimension side of things, um, you may or may not have seen some of these pictures. So I managed to grab a heap of stuff uh, over time. This particular one is actually very close to how my panel actually looks if I was to pull the panel assembly out of my sim. Um, you know, I've got, you know, uh, okay, my glare shield is different, but, but it is a boxed-in type arrangement. Um, you know, all of this is fairly common. Uh, yeah, so, you know, width and height and all that I was able to use um, and draw from in the building of, 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 the, uh, of the panel within the sim. I grabbed this particular drawing again off, off the net when I was looking at, um, you know, searching for 172 dimensions because, as you probably know, they're not, they're not that easy to get hold of. Uh, this was useful. Um, this was, you know, providing me with some dimensions of heights from floor and, and, and across the yokes and so on. Um, hats off to this particular gentleman for, for doing this. So, um, yeah, I, I did get a fair bit out of this one. Uh, managed to find this hand sketch, which was also useful. Uh, I don't know if it was the same gentleman or not, but, but you know, again, just dimensions between the shafts. Obviously, the gentleman or, or, or lady has sat in the, the 172 and physically dimension and measured this. So that was very helpful as well. Um, again, just ideas. I was looking at, and this is going back to the steam gauge version, but, you know, I've just flight illusions. They've got information on on their gauges, so if you're trying to fit gauges into a panel, you can refer to those. The iPad Mini, uh, even though now I actually do use an iPad Mini purely for Navigraph as it sits on my yoke, um, I was initially thinking of putting an iPad Mini on the far right-hand side of the, of the panel that I now have um, and embedded it in. Um, mainly just to, to show, I don't know whether it was going to show uh, checklists or those sorts of things. I never did it, um, but it was an idea at the time. So for visuals, uh, initially I was looking at wraparound and I thought, well, wraparound would be really good, um, you know, to have the main sim in the middle here and have full wraparound screen. 
but I, I never ended up doing it this way. Uh, and the real reason for that was because of the high wing design of the Cessna 172. Um, I think that you know if you've got a low wing design or you've got a Boeing where the wings you know or an aircraft where the wings are behind you, then this works really well. If you've got a high wing design and you want to have the effect of you know you know you're seeing your wings um, projecting straight out from the you know from effectively the shell that you're sitting in and the scenery underneath. Uh, I felt this was going to be a little bit problematic because, you know, not so much on the front, but when you get to the side views, you know, you've got a projector that's projecting down and effectively trying to project through your wing that you've got sitting there. Um, so I didn't, I wasn't comfortable that that was going to work. Um, and so I decided to use wraparound monitors, um, which, you know, there are plenty of YouTube videos on, on how wraparound monitors are set up, uh, and and that was that's how I've done it, um, and it, and it, and I think it worked out for the best. But you know, if I was to do a Boeing or something later on, I mean, look at that. That is absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, the detail in all that. Uh, you know, I love the way that you get your walk in here, and you can imagine your sim sitting behind. But anyway, I digress. Um, product breakdown. Uh, this is old. I have not spent 41,000 Australian dollars, I might add, uh, in, in, in on this. This was done a couple of years ago when I was just thrumming some ideas together. Um, you know, uh, I haven't done a full final costing so far, but, but I estimate that um, my sim has probably cost in the order of 15 to 20,000 all up. And that's including, you know, the television, I mean, the televisions and the computer. Are probably the biggest bit of that, you know, um, and you know, there's a few thousand dollars in the avionics with so on and so on. So, so it, it does add up, uh, you know. But I've spread that over three years, you know, um, when I um, find a bit of extra pocket money and, and the wife will let me spend, um, I'll throw some money into it. If anyone's interested, though, you know, I'm I'm happy to to do a refresh on some of this and provide that that feedback. But please. Don't take that, um, you know, as it is. Cut that in half. Uh, I've certainly not spent that at all. Uh, so the shell, uh, again, um, you know, this, this I found this one. Um, I don't quite remember where I got it from now, but again, just useful dimensions, really, just to make sure that when I was superimposing this image into my Fusion 360 model, that that I wasn't going too out of whack. Um, you know. I, I do know that, for example, my window cutouts um, don't look quite like that. Um, mine are a bit deeper, and I, and I think from memory the Cessna 172 ones specifically aren't that as well exactly. But uh, anyway, um, you know, I've, I've got mine. But, but by and large, it is pretty close. Um, this one here, sorry, let me just step it in on this one. No, it's a blank. Uh, this one here, this I, this I did find interesting uh, and actually helped me in the thinking behind how mine would go. Um, I haven't used the same timber as this particular individual. Um, I used some fairly heavy timber for mine uh, with, a, with a fair bit of bracing and that as well because I found that the frame was wobbling um, side to side. Uh, but I'll talk about that in a separate video. But this... this this gave me some good ideas, uh, and and ultimately is is what I use. See, particularly this this strut. See this thing here. You know that whole panel assembly that you saw in the previous slides. You know is is physically sits on these. You know there's like um, little brackets where this whole panel sits on these, and that that actually comes in really handy. Uh, I think that's it. Just to just to finish off, I've just realised that the uh, with the game thing. Anyway, it cuts me off. Don't know why. Anyway, so I got to the end of this and it cut me off. But uh, look, there's the slides. I apologise for that. Um, if anyone's interested and want got any questions, feel free leave them in the comments below, or I'll return you um, a message directly.
but thanks very much and look forward to sending up the next video. Bye for now.